Dialogue. Dialogue. Today we have Ms. Mubi Nirshad, the director, story carpet, who is an author, storyteller, certified corporate trainer, who believes in transformation through stories. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me here. Your profile, it has different uh, terminologies put together. You have been a storyteller, a lyricist, and a lot more. And of which uh, this uh, storyteller part uh, interested me much to put certain questions for this interview. Is storytelling a profession, a business? What is your take? Uh, storytelling as a, as like, since I'm into that profession as such, I would say that's an art, okay. really, definitely it's an art. Uh, it's not about just telling the story and going, whether your audience are involved in part of the story, whether they get what you're trying to say. So it's an art first. And then after that, I would say it's it's being uh, completely evolved as to be a business also because you, when you go to corporate, it's going to be corporate storytelling. Okay. And as a business, yes, definitely you can take business storytelling as such. So storytelling can be used for or adapt, can be molded and uh, adapted for any kind of environment. Uh, but then as for me, if you ask me, I think it's an art because... Uh, you should love doing it and uh, I cannot say that storytelling I have so that now I'll go and exhibit a great business it's not that it's about uh, being uh, even if it's a business yes you go and tell stories but even if it's for a community you just go and tell free storytelling for them because that's what you like so it's an art first I believe so as an art what are the elements that go in to fabricate the best story First, I would say a great thought process. Okay. Even though stories exist in the world, there are many stories which exist in the world. We have long known about stories from Thirsty Crow. Or, there is a set of moral stories which we have learned from LKG. Anytime you say Thirsty Crow is there, everywhere. It, uh, college students or LKG students or adults, everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. But then we cannot sell it, say the same story to the children as such right now because they know it. But instead of that, what difference can we make in that same story? to give a different idea to the children of this generation. They are not ready to accept whatever the stories we are going to say. Uh, it's been ages and ages we've been listening to that story. Yes. So I think first a creative thought process to bring that element, uh, to bring that story towards a different new perspective so that uh, it dwell, it just goes into the audience, it goes into the children so that they buy in the story first. And so I think it's a creative thought process first. And after that, elements have to add in, I would say, the body gestures, the voice, the way that you immerse in the story, the character itself. So it's like a movie star, how they can be an actor or actresses is part of their own character. But here in the story, you have to be the crow, you have to be the person, you have to be the... Uh, even there are four or five characters, you have to be part of everything. Yeah. So that's amazing to do. Okay, for in your first response, you said uh, corporate uh, storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, why do corporate uh, require storytelling or uh, what demands them to have such sessions? Um, for uh, right now, any corporate, you always talk about data, right? Last yeah. week, what, I mean, last whole month, what happened and how we have to proceed further, why did not work out, probably some of the things, why did not work out, is this for the reasons. So in any meeting, if you go, for example, the same ICT Academy, if you are going to say, so what all the interviews happened and how it is, it's going to be, if you're going to put together as a, a collective effort to your management, okay. it's going to be like these 38 interviews happened out of these, this is came out and all that probably it's like facts and figures mm. but in that story you're going to say that why we need to sustain this dialogue itself completely if there is a question arises and uh, you know what we have put 50 lectures and these many people have turned around and I've uh, made all this these many minutes and he has edited it and all that is there but then if you tell a story about on that particular day a girl named uh, Sheila or someone has come in and the way that she has narrated about her business and how it transforms the community that made a lot of impact and that's when we realized that ICT, this dialogue has to keep going. So that's a compelling story to say to yeah. the management of data and figures. It just makes people boring right now. I I would, uh, I am remembering something Jeff Bezos said, the Amazon CEO, to his employees. Uh, Can you please stop talking about data? Can you tell some stories? Okay. Will you ever listen to the air hostess instruction? You know, the mask will come and you put it on and sometimes when it goes off, you have to doze and please be careful and all that instruction, you know it. You know, why it is necessary to listen to your management when the mail comes because it's the same thing which comes again. You won't be able to read all the details of it. Yeah. So that helps you to understand an action to take rather than you talk about you do this, you do that. 
instead of that when you tell a story i think that makes a lot of impact so more than inform giving of information mm -hmm. building it as a story yes. matters yes. right yes. so this compels me to put another question mm -hmm. uh, what are the different uh, connotations would you attach to the word story initially when when i came like a storyteller it was only to children yeah. the story has to be told story itself means for children it okay. is not related to anywhere else so that was my perception too when i finished the course on storytelling i thought it's just for children so tell something about i mean a nice story to children they will also enjoy entertain and then go go off that was my perception but then when the request came in from adults from corporate from any community also can you come and present this can you come in i was wondering seriously i'm like to storyteller how can i adapt this for adults how can i adapt this for the other community how can i adapt this for the middle age the teenagers how it is going to be different then i started working on it differently it's not related to children alone the story if it is told in a good way if it is told in a way that appeals to the audience any age group anywhere it can fit in it can bring changes or it can bring transformation anywhere like recently i did a storytelling for a community which is about for the water saving conservation and environment so it's different it's environmental thought process it's about conservation so definitely you will go and talk about the points what all the action yeah. items you should take but who's going to listen they they just listen and go back but then when you tell a real story which were happened putting a character together and then con combine all that mm. action points whatever we are going to say that can be part of the story itself then they get in through okay. the thought yes so you create the awareness as well as you yes. uh, give a story yes so by that I way think, you yeah. drive your point home so it's not that one day related to children i such story it's 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 everywhere it's okay. i think our life itself is a story morning <laughs> to evening it's a story so when you say our life is a story yeah. uh, i had a practice when i was in school as I, as soon as i returned to home from mm. as, from my school i used to tell the old days happening to my mom okay and that was uh, she used to listen very attentively to whatever i said even if it had no sense so such habit is not encouraged or is not prevalent uh, with children of today mm -hmm. what is your take on this how should we encourage them to get into such a conversation with parents um when they come back from school it's always about uh, now pushing them towards it's time it's time just go to badminton class or just get time i mean it go to tuition or all that it's always there people are children are into different things like the physical uh, sports or anything is also very mandatory right now i won't say that when you come back from school don't go anywhere it just be in your place be with your children it's not that there are certain children which requires all that but when they come back there is a time there should be a family time for yeah. an hour i usually think about 7:30 to 8:30 because my children go to badminton in the evening and when they come back i love to be spending the time with them so i speak and i ask them what's going on what is going on in your life today you can even just hook with one one question okay. what is it really it feels sad to you today do you feel are you happy today or it feels like because we know from our children the face is not right or the face is good it seems you're so excited today what made you so excited and so they start talking and then it's a non stop story once they finish everything they are relaxed they are like i have given everything to my mother and that explains you what they are into mm -hmm. so i would tell you what happened during our family time day before yesterday we have to just sit around and have dinner and my son was like he's around 8 years he just turned 8 before two days so he said i'll make dosas okay. he is not used to it i told would you i mean is it okay to try it's it's really going to be difficult uh, no i'll try it so it's three or four dosas and the the the, the thawa was like really getting hot and i know that he's like very tender delicate and i was asking him is it okay and it's six or seven he was like okay it's a little hot can you take care and while he sat down there to eat and i didn't ask any questions he well he's just eating the dosa he just said you know why ma why you uh, know that why i made the dosas like i was you know it was hot it was like little getting so too much for me but then also why did i stay there to make the dosas uh, long back you put me the movie you showed me the movie the karate kid it was such an excellent movie i said why it's an excellent movie we are seeing so few movies like that why it is so excellent no it taught me to be powerful so i thought okay i should be powerful like the one in the karate kid i know it was a little hard but then i wanted to do it so this kind of an um, heart to heart discussion will make you feel what the thought process goes on in them we'll also be able to identify how much they can go how far they can go how much we can push them in sometimes your little push will make a lot of difference and i think that makes a lot of uh, transformation in the children okay. so consciously that's an effort to make sure 
you need to get the time to talk with them it's it's it should not be like we have reduced it because of the different distractions social media your mobile and everything because father is in one side of the mobile mother is with one side of the mobile and the children they get their own mobile phone so their world is now it's completely different disintegrated so there should be a point where you took off the phone completely and you should come together that it's a necessity for the future it's really a necessity for the future yeah communication is happening on uh, but it's happening on different tracks yes. and they create their own individual worlds which is not real yeah and you have to bring them back to the real world uh, have the communication and get the connect and develop the bonding that's yes. what you say from the way you have been answering so far i could get your passion the passion uh, that you have for storytelling and what do you like the most about storytelling are there any particular traits for a storyteller particular traits for a storyteller for me what storytelling makes a difference is all about what transformation i can bring in to children what difference does it create to the children that's what the that's what all about i believe in storytelling okay. so storytelling is just not meant for entertainment that's my viewpoint we have seen many movies disney cars and all that but then everything t- talks about a particular uh, character value at the end but i'm not sure how much the children will be able to take it because it's a visualized medium you yeah. just see through it but when you tell a story they are with you with a human eyes you just connect eye contact is much mandatory with all the children or all the adults almost we have to and then the nice voice voice i consider really nice because you should be able to play that part of a child or we should be able to part of the truck or like a plane zooms goes by or like a crow anything that you should bring up the voice into that the children are really at- attentive towards it even i've seen two year olds two and a half year olds for them we need to use lot of sounds alone yeah. then only they are more focused towards it but then as age goes by you should be able to play the role of the character and the sound plays a major part even though gestures and all that is fine but i believe the voice modulation is very much important for a story your answer gives me one visualization where you keep telling a story keep changing hats oh yes right yes you need to keep changing hats okay great what according to you should be the true sense of any story true sense of any story should be uh, if i tell you a story you should keep it for long and uh, that should be a source of information for you where it makes you to take that action okay. again and again i don't need to tell that story again but i would have told the story today and year after maybe after four years also you should tell me that on that day that particular story i listened from you that made me all the difference in my life uh, because i would tell that for me in my life uh, one of the sixth grade when i was uh, studying i was um i think i was uh, more interested in dance and annual day programs and all that uh, in that particular day that was a social exam where i was supposed to write so i didn't study anything and i copied on that day in front of a teacher everything and finished and came outside exactly the teacher was there ready to just hold me and she was asking what were you doing confronting was so bad and she took me immediately to the principal and the principal couldn't believe so that was a trust being built and how you actually broke the trust on that day of a principal and broke the trust of my mother on that day so i tell the story to the children and life got changed after that sixth grade imagine it's been years now mm-hmm. but the the amount of transformation that day i've got is so huge i never did any mistake after that that was a first and the last in my life I understand if you are into dancing if you are into annual day practice if you are into anything it's great but don't compromise on the other things and don't never break the trust of anybody who really trust on you and what are you going to get into your future there are so many values which you can take from a single story so that sense i have to deliver it to the children or to the audience to the teenagers or to that mid group so that they can take back home that i copied so it's just that it's so much in their minds and hearts so take it over and what action i should i should not be like her i should not do that like what she did you know that's not right that's all you don't need to say anything after that that's a story an end but this is true transparent right you are yeah. putting your reputation at stake yes, when you deliver definitely. a story yeah and that's a great trait of yes. a storyteller yes. so sacrifice here <laughs> yeah it's okay to tell that that's when you have to in the interest to put your of good to happen good, yeah to happen there are stories with happy and unhappy endings is it good to expect always any story should end happily or how to consume the ones that have unhappy ending 
it's it's okay to have unhappy endings also uh um i try to bring happy endings to all the stories because they go through the emotions yeah. or you it happened they will be like a you it's what's going on what will happen at the end it's always there even though the story already had a unhappy ending i try to bring or i try to give a twist and make sure that it gives a happy ending at the end so that everybody goes home like the powerful cheer or like happy in their minds but i would say one of the stories which we wanted to bring about uh, um, the importance of food and not wasting the food which one of those days uh, we were planning to uh, instead of i telling the story as such i took a video of a very small video of a boy who was suffering for not having food and that got made everything just two to two and a half minutes of a story okay. uh, it made such an impact and i could see all the children <laughs> like this going off completely in that tra- in that transient state dwelling on it and being part of that itself it's a thought process that's something which you need to give a value add on to them and uh, also we talked about the water conservation so i took a character of someone in cape town south africa how they are suffering mm. and at the end it was like she's suffering now also what do you what do you think we can help you don't know when we will also get through that suffering it's still there so it's a open ended question you leave that in the thought process that what's going to happen so what we should do it so it's not that we should say uh, the water has come and again she was all fine and finally there is water and she's now happy so again okay nice then we'll also do it it's okay to waste and it's okay to use everything and this particular session provoked a lot of thoughts and children were honestly coming up and saying you know aunty i used to sprinkle water everywhere in my bathroom i just waste water like that yeah. and sometimes i switch on the motor we don't see it the water just goes off and we switch off so those kind of things what children were i usually play in the shower for a long time i don't use the bucket of i don't take bath in the buckets they were abruptly in the front honestly they were speaking it's just that we are doing we waste water it is nice to get that thought process so that they will again work on it see without even be accepting there is something wrong within us we will not be able to transform yeah. first we should accept that there is yes. something wrong yes. so to ac- make them accept that itself is a challenge we need to tell that story to accept that it's okay i've been part of this i've been like this character it's okay and for that we appreciate to honestly appreciating that because before that we would have had sessions about not speaking like yeah so at least you tell the answer that means it's an honest answer right you tell that you waste water it is good at least you admit it then we'll think about transformation so that way it's okay to have an unhappy ending to have a thought process in their mind mm-hmm. to keep thinking about and uh, so that they can work on so unhappy endings are different from negative endings okay yes, not yes. not always unhappy endings give a negative message yes not negative say. message i would say negative uh, message i would say it's all about this little red hen if you see about the story everybody knows that story little red hen little red hen is a uh, it's a character again it has two three friends as like dog cat and a duck and it plays around it was going around and everything was going on nicely and they these friends come in the home just have tea juice or all the time and enjoy and then go back but this little red hen has to do all the work okay. so it has to play so next summer is i mean again the winter season was about to come so before that it has to harvest and keep everything ready so it buys the seeds and then it asks goes on asking to the friends can you help me to plant the seeds they will all say no 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 we cannot do it they will all just go like that okay then i'll do it myself it goes and does it and again for watering and for harvesting everything it asks for help nothing then they will not help for anything like harvesting or making into flour wheat flour nothing and but when the little red and makes the bread bake in the oven everything was ready <laughs> they're like really nice and uh, she will ask the question who's go up coming here to eat the bread they will all say the duck or with the sound we always make it a modulation and say they, they we are all there like i come and eat and the little red will ask the question were you there when i planted the seeds when i watered when i really harvested when i was struggling to take that to the uh, mill floor mill which is like really high up in the mountain were you helping no right then i will not give you this so it asked the question and also it says that no i'll not give you so they they just go like very sad that they they did it so instead of that that's called a negative ending i would say so that means you never helped so i'll not do Mm. rather than we can twist and tell the story like oh, it's okay i think one time it's just that I'll, 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 i'll love you to do that i understand you were so good friends to me you're all uh, there part of me but this time you were not of so helpful but then i i'm not like that i'll just give you share the food and that way they've involved okay. oh i'm sorry that we were not there part of any of the thing but you're so happy good hearted to offer the bread to us we will not do that once more i'm sorry 
So it's like a positive attribute to it. But otherwise, the story is actually having a negative ending towards that we don't need to okay. impart in the children because it means that it's like that. It's always you give and then I take. So it's just that give and take policy it comes mm -hmm. in. And uh, to make the world really much better, we need a lot of storytellers, I believe, rather than people with equipments and researchers. I think I've heard in one of the memes which people say that we have a lot of educators, we have a lot of trainers, we have a lot of other people like who are good in technologies, they can combat anything. But uh, the world needs a lot of great storytellers to tell good stories. Great. So that makes the feeling all great to impart the moral skills in the children. We don't have it right now. And I don't think so. We study maths, physics and mm -hmm. chemistry so much and we score well. I don't think so. Any school or anywhere we, I don't know, many, maybe there are a few schools which teach that. But it's very rare to, we don't buy in that opinion of life skills is a great skill yeah. to acquire. So we can teach anyone, I can be good in math, I can do whatever it is, but if I'm not good hearted, there is no point in I being proficient in math. That the world doesn't need that. Yeah, uh, we have been talking a lot about your storytelling uh, trait. So you have been a Toastmaster as well and how would you differentiate storytelling from training? Storytelling from training, I would yeah. say storytelling is an essence of the training. Okay. Training itself is like you bring storytelling into the training. So in anything, for example, a time management, uh, something uh, when you talk about a time management training or how do you maintain the time uh, or maybe how do you overcome your fear, anything of that sort, I usually quote the story of Neil Armstrong where the three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, uh, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins where they're part of the uh, space uh, program where they are going to land in the moon for the first time. It's really a nerve-wracking process because it's not something easy. Nobody would have ever done it first time. So they are getting in the capsule and just goes in there, just be in the space. And Collins being the space driver, just sitting in one side. And Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, they are supposed to take the lunar module and go inside the like moon. And uh, the message or the signal from the... Uh, station down in their place it's just that they are asking who's going to be ready and who's going to get out to the moon first and that it's the information or the instruction was given to uh, Buzz Aldrin first so Aldrin are you ready so he says yes I'm ready so the the count goes on 10 9 8 and then when the time when the count was about to finish he was like really nervous and he says that no I, I cannot so I, he just gets back and the information or the next instruction was given to Neil Armstrong and Neil Armstrong again goes into the moon uh, completely and he just makes the first step and say that it's a giant leap for mankind. So the world remembers always Neil Armstrong rather than yeah. Aldrin. So right now we always talk about uh, who is the first person who landed on the moon no matter what it's an LKG student or anybody we always talk about Neil Armstrong as the first one. Yeah. So just because the time every you both were given the opportunity at the same time but Aldrin could not take up that because of your or whatever would be the reason because you never know what is inside it's the first time anybody is going to experience so whatever we have not experienced it generally creates fear but someone who's going to go ahead of it yes i can do it whatever comes even uh, we have seen that the president at that time i think he has written a note also in case the astronauts didn't return i need to say this to the people and the public oh. it was that much of details was set because we never know it's a, it's a first time even though we know that this much of this is the gravity and all that if you know but as long as you go and venture out it's not there but he had the ability to take that even though if my life is at putting his life at stake he was ready and also the time so you were also given equal opportunity but then you missed it so the world did not remember you so how come what time and when opportunity comes in so you missed the time that's all gone and you have planned to do something in the morning you have planned to do something execute your business at this point in time it's gone and it will not come up so you may be coming around in a different period of time so it's like the time is very much important at that point in time so that's like storytelling is it the story which comes into the training and so you talk about how well you have to use the opportunity I have seen, I have been to conferences, if you have been to conferences, uh, next time when you go, just notice it. Um, in a conference, there may be two, three, three or four, five speakers who just talk about their own stories yeah. or their own, some somewhere else, like someone else in their stories. We just get, we don't need to take notes. That's all. One story and the way, three stories, good enough to take that action. And that creates a lot of impact rather than just telling, just doing a PPT and say that, you know, the people have to do this 
on time there are four questions or they like four points you should remember and these are the first point this is the second point this is the third point we used to say that as trainers will send you this ppt and you can have it and i don't know when you will open the ppt ever again the learnings if you get on that day that's the only thing so why not to give stories itself as a trainer that's very important i believe that's a pertinent question for prospective trainers and trainers on the profession now mm -hmm. it's a good guideline today television occupies most of the time of children in your perception what impact it has created particularly when they watch cartoons uh, do you think that uh, it has impacted children to some extent what is your take on this i won't say it has impacted children in a positive way definitely okay i haven't seen children have gone improved a lot way through television so i would say that television doesn't make any importance or like a means of learning to the children but without that we cannot live that's also acceptable so that means like at a day like probably 15 minutes a day should be we can just give the time and say that 6 to 620 you are you can watch your favorite show and then probably you should switch it off so teaching them to use their entertainment accordingly then it because it's just an entertainment even though you learn phonics or anything you just see because it's a visual medium it just goes here and there and you just watch it it doesn't make any learning out of it sometimes we think that they are disturbing us so much they are distracting us so much from our work or our phone calls or our cooking and we just say that okay watch the tv for a while and i'll be back and obviously they won't they'll be hooked we will call them again and again for dinner or anything they will not come back they'll not switch off because we haven't set it up that 6 to 620 or 7 to 715 is your time and we purposely consciously give and take it back also just like that whenever you have time you just go and watch and the remote is always in their control and they know everything to do and for me personally i don't have a tv for more than 5 years now it's just been going so smooth and people ask it's like you are living in a stone age <laughs> it's like that but i'm happy that you are also getting that feedback i have a tv just for the purpose of any time if you want to watch anything it's just there but it's not been on and life is going really good because we indulge on productive things and newspaper is always there to read and there are children's edition which comes in which gives the news just in crisp yeah. you don't need to read whole about it it's okay to read bits and pieces but phonics it doesn't mean that you have to uh, you can just talk with the children in person in physical just like how you and i are talking like this you need to sit with the child and speak mm -hmm. rather than just being a cartoon character you can be a storyteller for your children you can be the kind of a thirsty crow so why do they need to see there rather than they can see you as you evolving into the character itself and you can see some mothers they come and say no no we are not storytellers like you everybody is a storyteller from the beginning we are born right as as humans we are storytellers from the beginning we always see two men or someone talking in the anywhere you go just they talk for hours and hours what is the story and you need to tell using the voice modulation little bit of you need to just capture them that's all they will be completely following you they'll be with you and instead we can take a book and read as part of the so that's our physical connection bonding also will develop a lot rather than cartoon characters will never impart learning as such it gives a whole sense of entertainment yeah. you can see a different part of the world i won't say cut it off completely that's not possible like like us how we made it maybe you you can try but i won't say just cutting off completely will make actually chaos in the family nobody will be listening to it Child, children will not listen to it i've been asking you questions on all your different traits from storyteller trainer i also found that you are a writer and have published a book positive ripples and uh, we would like to have some information on that book okay so when i um, my uh, career i think i would have started with a corporate life i worked with mncs till 2011 oh. it was a great stint and when i thought about taking a break for my children i realized that uh, there was a need for to be with my elder son uh, he was being coined as an introvert and shy person from one of the american teacher okay. so i realized that there is a need and when she said that i was uh, initially surprised and i was shocked also and i thought what would be the best thing i have tried different things for him Uh, be it sport or be it uh, music or all that we have tried uh, none of that worked so we came to india uh, one of the thing which we tried was public speaking okay. so part of uh, standing in stage and speaking has created him has changed him a lot uh, during the phase of i change so i realized the change in him and i thought uh, if that can change one child 
there must be the same kind of challenges will be with the other children also and that's the reason we evolved we started something called story carpet really and uh, so the process before changing into as a storyteller and starting something called story carpet i was writing rhymes for a particular company okay. and that's when i realized uh, to start something writing positive rhymes for children because we have seen all the rhymes right now and uh, initial, I mean, general rhymes, Baba Black Ship or maybe London Bridge or Rain, Rain, Go Away. We can never say Rain, Rain, Go Away in Chennai. Definitely, we want rain so much. So the place where we are in and all that, it made the feeling that why not we write the positivity in the rhymes. And that's when my first thing started as uh, a writer, the lyricist towards okay. our YouTube rhymes. And since it was well received, I thought uh, we should also start writing. So I was also writing few articles in Infinity Thoughts. Uh, for a while and uh, that I, I realized that I feel so calm and peace while writing to put together the thoughts and uh, so the life experiences I was starting to write in a blog and it was keep on going they were all real life experiences and if that can create change a ripple in someone uh, that it's it changed me as such it changed me okay. the experience so I thought, why not it can change somebody else also. If it has created a learning and transformation in myself, it can definitely change someone else also. So that's when I realized that we should really publish it as a book and keep it. And uh, that's when I we published around last May, uh, The Positive Ripples. Positive Ripple creates a lot of ripple. That's the intention of it. Okay. And uh, that's a, that was the same intention which I wrote a book. That was the same intention we started even Story Carpet. It's not about, okay, I should start a company, I should start a business. It was not that way. It was all about uh, bringing transformation to people, to children, and to bring their highest potential beyond through stories. So, you have been creating positive ripples right through your answers so far. We have been listening about uh, storytelling, the art of storytelling, and your other facets as a writer. Now, we'll have a rapid fire round. I'll give you words. You can answer me in, on a reflective mode. Creativity. Newness. Essence of life. To be happy and to make others happy and probably always in positive mode. Your most liked book. The one which I'm reading right now, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by James Murphy. The best one-line story. Our child was in the railway station begging for food with a sad face. But the picture of him in a big auction sold in millions. Best inspiration? My grandfather. That was a great show and uh, you have been creating positive ripples through your answers so far. Thank you for being on our sets today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great discussion, great introspection of all that what we have discussed. And uh, I'm glad that I'm here. Thank you. Stories are not just stories. They do the magic of transforming people. And that was Mubi Nirshad, Director, Story Carpet on ICT Academy Dialogue. Follow us on YouTube, Insta, Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.